This is day 5 of the novena to Saint Daniel Comboni. 55 years after the death of Bishop Daniel Comboni and exactly 65 years after the birth of the Comboni Missionary Sisters or Pia Madre de la Negrizia SMC, a Comboni missionary, Bishop Angelo Negri, founded the Little Sisters of Mary Immaculate of Gulu. He was inspired to start a congregation for African sisters, fulfilling a desire expressed by his predecessor, Monsignor Antonio Vignata, Apostolic Prefect of Ecotero Nile. The congregation began in Gulu. That's why it is called Little Sisters of Mary Maculate of Gulu. By that time, the girls were not supposed to be educated. They were not supposed to go to school. Their main work was to do domestic work, to get married and bring it dower for the family. Women had no voice in the society. They were fully involved to manage the families. So Bishop Angelo Negri was in, inspired to start this congregation to uplift the girl child and also women in the society. In 1936, Bishop Angelo was inspired to start a congregation for the African sisters, fulfilling the desire expressed by his predecessor, Monsignor Antonio Vignato, apostolic prefect of the Equatorial Nile, living the dream of Bishop Daniel Comboni. The congregation began in Gulu in 1936 when 10 young girls who felt the vocation to serve as sisters were placed under the care of Reverend Sister Angioletta Donini, a Comboni missionary sister who became a co-foundress of the congregation. With the zeal to show the burning love of Jesus to the vulnerable through Christian education, love for prayers, simplicity of life and involvement in social services, the Little Sisters of Mary Immaculate of Gulu today evangelize through educational services, pastoral work, health services and social work. We are called the Little Sisters not because uh, physically, we, eh, it is not in a physical aspect or physical sense. This littleness is the littleness of Mother Mary. It is to be humble, to be humble because we are following the footsteps of Mother Mary. Yes, you see us, you know, we have different categories of physical aspects. You know, someone is fat, others are small. They say, this one deserves to be little sisters. Then this one deserves another name. But it is not <laughs> in that aspect. You don't see the body. It is the humility. You have to be humble. Our charism is zeal to show the burning love of Jesus Christ to the most vulnerable. These are children, women, the, the, disab the disabled people, and mainly also we work with the, the children, the, the, the children eh, in the schools who work with the girls. 
the 10 girls who showed interest to become the sisters were placed in the hands of Reverend Sister Angeletta Donini, who became the co foundress of the congregation of the Little Sisters of Mary Margaret of Gulu. It means our founder, Bishop Angelo Negri, and our co foundress, Reverend Sister Angeletta Donini, were companies. We are founded by them. And those 10 girls who showed interest, they came from the school, which is a Sacred Heart Girls SS in Gulu, within our mother house. Company is very, very uh, con um, uh, essential in our spiritual life in the uh, in sense that um, our founder, Bishop Angelo Negri, and the co-foundress, Mother Angeletta, were the daughters, uh, was the daughter and the son of, of Komponi. So the spirituality Komponi imparted in them, uh, they also uh, kind of imparted in us. So uh, Komponi is like a grandfather to us, you know, because he, his children have given birth to us, so he's a, he's a grandfather to us and is very, very uh, uh, essential and uh, we, we look to, to, to him. Yeah. We have uh, the stages in our congregation. Uh, first of all, as a congregation, we admit the committed Catholic girls who are physically fit or normal, emotionally stable, physically well balanced, and having successfully completed all, all A levels, college, university, and other relevant training courses. We have three stages of formation. Aspirant stage. The girls who aspire to join our congregation are followed up right from primary, secondary, up to when they finish the training until they join the congregation. They are followed up. We have that one lasts for one year. When they are admitted into the congregation, their formation lasts for one year. We have the postulancy. The stage of postulancy is for one year also. The candidates begin to learn the life of the congregation, the life of the sisters. They learn how to live in a community with appropriate knowledge of the congregation. After living well, they are admitted to novitiate. A novitiate is the period that lasts for two years. While in novitiate, the candidate enters into a deep personal experience with God. She is taught the rule of life of the congregation. She will be admitted to the first verse if she is found fit for the religious life. So during that time, they are given a time to reflect on their own life, to reflect in their relationship with the Lord, and with a lot of discernment, if they also feel that that is their call, it is confirmed. 
and uh, a candidate is given the vows to take. In the case, if someone feels to join the congregation, the, the girl gets in touch with us in the community nearby. Especially we are here living in Mboya. If there is any girl who wants to join us, the girl can get in touch with us and express that desire in writing. Then from there, the journey begins. Of course, uh, the addresses to use will be the address of the congregation where the girl will have to write the application and uh, we reply her and we keep on it. Uh, having an interaction with the girl and then the parents and also the people within the family. As a congregation, we work in uh, almost all the northern part of Uganda. We are in Gulu, that is where our mother house is. We are in Kalongo, we are in Kitugu, we are in Lira, we are in Nebi, we are in Arua, we are in Hoima, we are here in Kambala. We are now spread almost in four parts of the, of the world. We, we are in Uganda, we are in Kenya, we are in USA, we are in, we are in Italy. Yeah, uh, offering uh, the, the pastoral activities. Uh, uh, most of us work in, uh, uh, okay, some few work in uh, Komponi parishes like here in Boya. We, we, we are in Komponi parish and uh, uh, Kalong. Kalong also Komponis are the ones uh, taking care of that parish. Most of the parishes now, Komponi, Komponis have handed to the, to the diocesan uh, priests, but uh, formally, most of those uh, parishes where we are, we are managed by the by the Komboni priests. Yeah. Uh, as for how many we are in Uganda, we are approximately um, uh, 500. Uh, 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 500 approximately. We live in different parts of Uganda. Uh, here, like in Kampala, we have about six communities. Uh, we have this Mboya community, we have Nsambia community, we have a community in, um, in, in Amgongo, we have a community in Bina, and then also uh, uh, in Luzira, Bishop Sipirano, secondary school, we have also sisters there. We work in the schools from nursery to tertiary institutions, we work in the hospitals, both private and government hospitals. We also do pastoral work. We involve ourselves in liturgical activities at the parish level, and also we join other pastoral agents in the diocesan level. Many of us, we we evangelize through education where it is a girls' schools. That one does not mean that we neglect men, no. We evangelize all and we are involved in where the girls' schools are and also where there is a mixed school. We teach in all levels, from nursery to tertiary level. This has become a, a, a part of our sustainability you now, because as we said, uh, nothing much now you, you expect, because the salaries are not coming where we used to kind of survive. And uh, here in Kampala, practically we don't have gardens. 
and uh, uh, they are, they, this 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 is a, a play, playground for the children but the sisters kind of deem defeat with the direction of head, headmistress who is here practically involved in the in the <laughs> plantation of, uh, of of greens and some tomatoes to <laughs> yeah the, this has been helping us also to kind of subsidize you know the the the, the expenses apart from a kindergarten we get involved in uh, liturgical activities uh, we have not been so much in for uh, things like uh, catechetical works because of uh, uh, much activities we have uh, in, the, in the kindergarten and also uh, from time to time uh, we also reach out to uh, see uh, people in the families. That is what we do. Thirty-six years after the birth and formation of the Little Sisters of Mary Immaculate of Gulu, Two Komboni missionaries, Right Reverend Bishop Sixto Mazoldi and the Very Reverend Father John Marengoni, during their stay in Moroto Catholic Diocese in the northeastern part of Uganda, developed an inspiration in happy memories of Bishop Daniel Komboni. On December 8, 1975, Right Reverend Bishop Sixto Mazoldi and Reverend Father John Maringoni founded the Evangelizing Sisters of Mary, ESM, as an African religious missionary congregation of women founded in the Moroto Diocese of Northeast Uganda. The first center of the institute was in Morulem, in Moroto Catholic Diocese, with its first members being 14 girls from Tanzania and 6 girls from Uganda. These 20 aspirants became postulants on July 16, 1976 at the Apostles of Jesus Mother House in Moroto Catholic Diocese, Uganda. At the moment, we are working in 10 countries in the world. Uh, that is in East Africa, we are in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Then we work in Zambia, in South Sudan, South Africa. We work in Europe, that is Italy and Germany. We work in USA and in Cuba. Today, with their generalate located in Ongata, Rongai, south of Nairobi, Kenya, the Evangelizing Sisters of Mary Novitiate House is located in the Diocese of Ngong, Kenya, with 33 communities, 4 formative communities, and 29 apostolic communities. In Uganda, we work in 8 dioceses, namely Nebi Diocese, Moroto Diocese, Jinja Diocese, Kampala Archdiocese, Kasana Luero Diocese, Fort Porto Diocese, Mbarara Archdiocese, and Kabale Diocese. Their main charism is to announce the gospel message to non-Christians, to plant the church among people who do not believe in Christ, and to bring the church to its full development, where it is already implanted. Our main work is first evangelization through catechetical instruction, meaning we go to the remotest places in the world, places that no other congregations are willing to go to because of uh, lack of amenities like hospitals, schools, transports, electricity, water, and so forth. Evangelizing Sisters of Mary are ready to go there because by nature we are missionaries. Our first priority is to go to those places that nobody is willing to go to. 
uh, we work basically as catechists. In fact, all the evangelizing sisters of Mary by charism, we are catechists. Then, besides that, we are teachers, we are nurses, we are social workers, we are secretaries, we do all kind of activities. But even though you are a teacher, you are a nurse or whatever, you should be available to do catechetical instruction at any time, at any place. Uh, in Uganda, or in the three East African countries, that is Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, basically this is where we've got our candidates from. Although we've got a few sisters also from DRC Congo and from South Sudan, we've got some. For one to join our congregation, the minimum requirement is a grade one or two. That is the minimum requirement. But one can still join even when you are really trained as a teacher, as a nurse, as an accountant. One can join us after university, whatever level of education you've got. But the minimum is a grade one or grade two, equivalent to all these other countries. The Komboni missionaries who founded us have been our, not just our founders, our formators also. Formators means trainers. They trained us to be who we are up to date. And personally, I have had the privilege of working with Komboni missionaries all my religious life. I took my first vows on 6th of January 1985 and I took my final vows on 6th of January 1993. I celebrated my silver jubilee, that is 25 years of religious life, on 6th of January 2010. And for all my working experience, I worked in St. Mary's Catholic Parish on Gatarongai, Kenya, that is in Gong Diocese. I worked there for 20 years and I worked under Komboni missionaries. And uh, now I am in Buya Parish, which is also run by Komboni missionaries. I enjoyed my life and I still enjoy my life as a missionary religious sister because I gained a lot of experience interacting with different tribes, with people from different backgrounds. And uh, I, I feel comfortable wherever I am sent or wherever I am working. I easily adjust to different cultures and I realize that people are the same, especially Africans. And for that, I feel just at home, I feel happy, I feel fulfilled and I'm very proud of my congregation, especially the fact that we are founded by Komboni missionaries. Fortunately for me, I happen to be from Lira Diocese and it is a diocese that was founded by Komboni missionaries. My home parish, Aboke Parish, was run by Komboni missionaries until late, I mean eight early 90s. The Komboni missionaries are the ones who baptized me, they are the ones who confirmed me, they are the ones who sent me to the convent. So I have a special relationship with them. I take them as my parents. So I am happy as a religious sister and first African missionary congregation. In case you are not aware, I know there are many missionary congregations, but we were the first African missionary congregation to be founded in Africa. All my training, my formation, my experience as a missionary, we have always been encouraged to trust in divine providence. Our founders have always preached to us about divine providence, have faith in divine providence, and we also talk about it. But this year of COVID has made me realize what divine providence is. There are times we thought we are stuck, we will not have food even for tomorrow. Then from nowhere, somebody walks to our house with a bag of rice, with uh, some kilos of posho, with some beans, and that is it. Or from nowhere, 
I realized somebody has sent me money through my phone, mobile money, and I'm like, wow. So what do you call this? To me, it is divine providence. This is the way we have lived our life. Uh, it has also, the COVID-19 has also taught us to be very creative and, adv and adventurous. At the beginning of the lockdown, that is the months of April, May, we realize we are spending a lot of money on water bill. Because now all of us are at home, everybody is flushing the toilet and so forth. Then we said, my God, how are we going to make it? We don't have income. How shall we manage? So we decided to buy water tank. Uh, 140 liters, 240 liters, and we put in each bathroom. So we said, God has blessed us with a lot of rain. So we fetch rainwater from outside and we fill up our drums. And instead of flushing the city council water, we use the rainwater. It drastically reduced our bills from 270 to 60 per month. So this is how we're surviving. Yeah. I would be glad to tell you that though our congregation was founded in 1975 in Moroto Diocese, the first members of the congregation happened to be from Tanzania. Our founder, that is Father John Marengoni, brought 16 girls from Tanzania and then got six girls from Uganda, different parts of Uganda, and they became 22. So this made the first group. We call them pioneers. Now, our congregation is so mixed and we are so happy because we have so many sisters from Tanzania, from Kenya, from Uganda, and as I told you, we have already from DRC a good number of sisters and we have some three from South Sudan. So we are praying that we get more vocation from different countries, especially where we work. But at the same time, I am not happy to tell you, Mbuya Parish, we don't have a single um, candidate. So it would be good also, since you've been in this parish for quite a number of years, to get somebody to join us, at least to promote. We have the sisters from other dioceses. All the dioceses is where we work, except Mbuya. Kampala Archdiocese, yes, but Mbuya Parish, we don't have any yet.